Hi everyone, welcome to the amazing file management tricks that are going to save the day in Premiere Pro. I'm trying to sex up this video. It's got some amazing tips and tricks in it, but I kind of had it down as file management. <laughs> it was the, like, it's the subgroup that it's in. And I don't want you to go like, oh geez, I'm going to skip all file management because there's some good ones in here. All right, let's get started. So first up, if you're playing along, um, I'm using the last video from the last file. It's got a bunch of stuff that I imported. I'm actually going to import some more of the same. It's going to be weird. So I Command I, okay, and I'm going to move more from Donut Dynamite. Let's say I wasn't sure. I was like, have I got this in here? I'll just import it again. Okay. The weird thing about Premiere Pro, it'll import it twice. Okay, which can be really annoying. So what you can do, make sure you're in your project, and go to Edit, and you can go in here and say oh, Consolidate Duplicates. Watch, they just get rid of them all. Nice. The next one is my favorite. No, I've put them in some sort of order of my favorites. So this, this this video is destined to get less and less interesting towards the end. There's good ones. I've not included any bad ones, I think. But anyway, uh, my next most favorite one is when, uh, let's say that I've got this. I'm going to add a couple of bits of B-roll here. So let's say we're cutting up some bad um, transitions. I'm just, let's just dump a few of them in here uh, onto my timeline. And then you're like, actually, I've got all this other junk. What is it? Do I need it? Is it in the sequence? Oh, make sure your project window is selected. You can go to edit and you can say remove unused. And it just deletes them unless they've been used on a sequence in this project. Cool, huh? And um, that one's a bit, uh, I don't know. I feel like that is too rash and harsh. Often I just want to know like what's being used and what's not being used. So what you do is basically you do the exact same thing and then go edit undo. Okay, because then they're back in there, but they're highlighted. And that's kind of enough for me. I'm like, okay, I know that one's not being used, and maybe I should have. Like, oh, why haven't I used the mixed butter one? It's the best one. I have no idea whether it's good or not, but you get the idea, right? You can remove them, but if you undo it straight away, it'll just highlight them, and I find that's quite useful. Next is what I normally call packaging your document. Um, uh, it's from like graphic design lingo, uh, where we need to kind of, we've got a project file and we've got videos probably everywhere. Some on our desktop, some in our downloads folders, some on our hard drive, some on the SD card. We just want to get them into one place because we either need to archive it or we need to send it to somebody else or just look less <laughs> like a messy person. Okay, so you can do that easily in Premiere Pro. Have the project you want to tidy up open. Have it selected down here in the project panel. Go to file, go to project manager okay tick the sequence you want to back up all of them one of them i've only got one okay over here uh i want to exclude any unused clips depending on what you want to do i'm going to exclude them i'm going to include the audio conforms and the preview files and rename i haven't renamed in my files and my clip name so it doesn't really matter uh these preview files we talked about them earlier remember premiere pro couldn't doesn't like to read an mp3 let's say so it creates this wave file or unpacks it as a I can't remember the extension but unpacks it into a format it can use so do you want to include those you don't need to because premiere pro will generate them again afterwards so it's up to you uh collect files to a new location so you're going to have a copy that's the big one it's going to collect them and copy so you're going to have duplicates of all of this it's kind of a way of you know, getting it off onto a backup drive. That's what I do. Okay, so you click it all, stick it onto a backup drive, and then you know you have to go and find everything, try and drag it, and links break, and you have missing files. I'm going to stick mine on my desktop. Anyway, let's go have a look how it gets created. So there it is there. That's the name of my file, my project. I'm using the project names as the video names as well. So ignore that. This might be like, uh, I don't know, co-working space video okay and inside of there you've got a copy of your project file dot pr prog j even uh, those are the previews that we brought along for the ride there's the videos that are being used these are all the videos that are being used you will notice i was gonna i wasn't sure if i put this in or not but i guess i should all the mp4s just get dumped in the f uh, file format these movs okay in the project some of the movs some of the mp4s okay it, these are using an underlying codec called uh, AVCHD, and they the way Premiere Pro needs to deal with them is it needs to put them in this uh, BDMV folder inside Stream, and there it is there. That's the file that you are working with. Okay, if you want to tidy things up for whatever reason, you can drag them out. Premiere Pro won't like it because it'll be missing them. Okay, but you can relink them. It's up to you whether you want to keep them in these like I don't know messy folders or not. But anyway. Now I can grab this thing here and I can say zip. Okay, and on Mac it's called compress. On a PC I think it's send to WinZip or 
this compressed folder. I can't remember what it is on PC. It's in here somewhere. Okay, and you can then zip it all up and send it off or stick it on a disk. You know what to do with it. <laughs> but just remember it's a copy and you will never remember it is under file project manager, which doesn't seem, I don't know, seems a bit ambiguous, but really handy to tidy up those messy files. All right, the next one we've done maybe once or twice during the course, but let's put it all in file management is Rivian Limb Finder. So in here and you're like, where did this one, where did I get this from? I can go right click and somewhere in here, Reveal and Finder. I'm not sure what it is on a PC, is it Reveal in Windows? Hmm. You'll know, because it'll say Reveal in something. Finder is a Mac thing, I thought. Okay, and it'll open up, let's open up my other uh, window here. Okay, my other screen, there it is there. It's just telling me where it is. You can do it from over here as well. You can right click it and say, actually show me this in the Finder. Okay, towards the bottom, Reveal in the Finder. You can also Reveal in Project. Okay, so Reveal and Finder gets us back to the exact same place. Okay, but Reveal and Finder, let's look at something else. It'll highlight it over here, which is handy. Reveal in Project. There you go. Next tip. The next one is searching in here. I've made it bigger to make it. We're going to do a lot down here in the Project panel. So we did searching or finding here in the timeline. Remember, it was just Command for Mac, Control for PC, F. Okay, and you could do finding stuff. We did that earlier. You can do it over here as well. So just whatever you've got selected will activate that using that same shortcut. So over here on my Mac, Command F, Control F on a PC, and I can do my find. Okay, uh, I want to find everything that has the word butter in it. Now, one thing that can be a bit confusing is that it's got two things here. And if you've adjusted it like we did earlier, it's going to go find. Bloop. Mine makes a happy little noise. Okay, that um, it's the computer butting his head against the glass. I can't find it. Um, I know there's the word butter there. It's because we've gone match this. So all, it needs to match all of these things. I want to say match any of these two. Okay, this or that, any of them. Okay, and it's highlighted over here. Okay, there's a easier find in this one. You can just use it up here. So let's type butter. Okay, and there you go. The strange thing though is that it doesn't turn off <laughs> ever. You have to like remember to hit the cross to get rid of it. It's pretty good. You can search for frames per second. Okay, uh, so 25 is weird. Like it's bringing me everything that has the, anything to do with 25. So this has 25 somewhere in the metadata. Uh, it's not the frames per second. These ones are perfect. There's something in there. You can see it. Can you see it? I can't see anything in there. It says 25. Something in the metadata finds it. So it's pretty, uh, tries to find everything. But if we do 25.00, oh, still has it in there. <laughs> I'm not sure why that one's appearing. Uh, so just make sure you delete it when you're finished. Okay, you can be thinking camera model if if that metadata is included in the video. Okay, the different camera models, maybe the date. Okay, anything you can search in there. His little friend over here is quite interesting. Okay, this one creates a search bin. Okay, we know bins is like little folders. So what you can do is click this and say we get kind of a similar search as we had before. So find all the metadata that has that 25 frames per second. And this, no, just all that, okay? And let's click OK. And you can see over here, okay, it's weird. It's created a little bin with a little, can you see the little spyglass in it? This bin has grabbed a bunch of files that have the word 25 in there somewhere, this random guy, okay? Uh, but weirdly, look, there's, let's look at color correction 02, okay? That's something that you won't have in yours because I randomly imported that before. Uh, but you can see here, it's there and there. Have I got duplicates now? No. This is just like this permanent search. It's always running. Well, kind of. Okay, it's like a saved search. It means that if I add something else later on, it'll appear in here as well. Just kind of like a way of segmenting things. It's not a duplicate. I can use it out of here, but it's just like a, mm, it's not a copy. I don't want to use the copy. It's like a, um, what's the word I want? Another iteration of this, if that's the word. I don't think that's the right word, but hopefully you get what I mean. It's just showing you another way of looking at this and you can open it up separately. Okay, you can double click on it and just look at this stuff. Okay, I can go back up to my original one and let's say I do add something else to it. So something else, 10, 25 frames-ish. So this uh, color correction H, I'm hoping is 25 frames. I'm not gonna drag it into that folder. It's not a folder like we've been using, it's a search bin. Okay, so if I drag it down here, it is 25 frames and you're like, oh, huh, didn't appear in here. This thing is not, oh, it did appear. It's not very quick, okay? 
just give it a second. It eventually does the search again. I have no idea like the time difference. I end up just kind of clicking on it and going and clicking things and it seems to happen. I don't think my clicking helps. <laughs> there is just a timer that goes, I'm going to go search some more, but I think it's controlled by hamsters. So uh, just be patient and wait for it to update. How to get rid of it. Okay, you can just delete it and you're not actually deleting your files. It's just a different search. You might have a search bin that has, you know, 1080p or actually drop this down. There's quite a uh, good stuff in here. Okay, depending on the metadata of your original footage. Okay, hey, it's in frame rate. <laughs> Hopefully that'll clean it up and get rid of that guy. It did finally. Okay, so I've just got those ones with 25 frames per second. All right, that is doing some extreme searching. Uh, let's get on to the next trick. The next one is to do with the metadata across the top here. We've looked at kind of uh, adjusting this in the past, but you can save it. Um, so let's change it a little bit. So let's say that for us, frame rate is not that important or it is, but there's other stuff. So let's just turn on something else. So you right click any of these guys, okay, along the top here, top of the columns, pick something else. Let's have a look at basic, what else do we want? Let's use, say, uh, whether the video and audio being used and maybe what video codec is using. Okay, so we can click OK, get it in the right order. Okay, by, by scrolling left and right. Um, I've been using that scroll wheel mouse. You can just drag it by left and right. I'm using that scroll wheel mouse. I can hold shift and drag it up and down that little scroll wheel. That's a handy trick and pretty much most of these. If you hold a uh, shift down and scroll left and right, it'll scrub left and right on them. And when I say scrub left and right, I mean scroll wheel, holding shift up and down, up and down on the scroll wheel, goes left and right. So I'm going to go along to this endpoint. Where is it here? I want to move all of these along. It's a bit of a pain kind of getting them all the way along, but it works eventually. Did I select all of those? Did I? <laughs> Video usage. Okay, it might be the audio channel as well. Okay, we got there. I kind of shuffled them all along. Uh, you can save the layout. Okay, you can click on this option here and say save a new view preset. Okay, uh, so I can say this is my, uh, I don't know, Assembly, okay, when you're doing kind of, uh, is that assembly? That looks good to me. So it might be assembly, you might have, uh, I don't know, there might be an audio version where, you know, the audio information is closer or you just might have one that you use all the time, the Dan one, okay, and I'm gonna not do that. You can obviously set a preset, okay, remember, do that, then go into your keyboard shortcuts, find the words project view, and then turn it into a shortcut. I'm unlikely to ever do that. Um, I don't switch them enough. Okay, click OK. So it just means that later on I can switch them back and forth between different ones. Okay, if you do need to load a, a different one because you've saved a different one, you can go back to this. The other thing to note is that this view here is also tied in where my workspace is. So Dan editing. Okay, if I save the changes to this workspace now, it will remember this as well. Okay. So video usage, I'm going to drag it all the way over here. Okay, and media in back in. So this one here is kind of in the wrong spot now. So if I go back to my window workspaces and say, actually, let's reset to the save layout, you'll notice that it all comes back to normal. So you might have your member editing version. You might have it, you know, your version for audio and switch these around, spend a bit of time getting it right. Color correction one, just so that you can see what you need to codecs or frame rates, whatever it is, and they will save and connect to the workspace. All right, the next one is kind of tricky. You can get yourself into problems with it. It's pretty easy to do. Let's say that you're working on stuff and you've got a bunch of stuff that you have already used on the timeline and it's really missing. You're like, actually, I just don't need any of this, that and that. I just don't need to see it. I just need the interview and all the stuff can go away. Okay, and you can right click any of them and go to hide. And look at that, nice tidy project panel. The problem is, is the next person to come along that you send it to goes, where's all the footage? I can see it over here. It's not here, where's it gone? Okay, so make sure you tell the person you're sending it to. Okay, and you can, to get it back, you just right click anywhere in here and say view hidden and it toggles it back on. And it is a toggle switch. 
Okay, so let's say you just turn it on for a second to start checking these things in the source monitor and adding them, and then you actually wanna go back to your tidy option. If you go view hidden again, okay, it toggles back and forth. All right, I'm gonna turn that off. View hide, it is a nice way of tidying up a project. I'm too scared to turn it on myself for fear of losing stuff and spending ages trying to find it. All right, next tip. Next thing is a quick, easy one, finding footage, right clicking it. And instead of trying to like search through the metadata and turn it all on on these little columns, you can actually just find properties. So right click the file, go to properties. Sometimes you need to give it a second for it to go through and figure it out. And this is the stuff that this file, you know, Premiere Pro knows about your document all in just one big lump rather than trying to turn things on and off. And depending on how it was shot, how much metadata the camera put into it, or what's been stripped out in the editing process, you might find lots in here, you might find very little. But that's the way to do it, let's close that down. Oh, one thing I thought of is there's actually a panel for metadata as well. So let's select on this one, go to window, go to metadata, mine's already on somewhere. If it's ticked on, it's just on somewhere that I can't, oh, there it is. Okay, you can turn it on and off. Uh, so you can see it all there as a panel as well. And the cool thing about this, the, the problem with this is you've got to kind of do a bit of searching through to find the stuff that's actually applied, but you can actually add stuff to this. Okay, so you can start decide, you know, adding metadata this way using this panel here. All right, let's go back to my source window and next tip. All right, this last one, I hope you never need. Uh, if you're, for whatever reason, Premiere Pro crashes, um, it will try and load up our version. You know, it tries to say, hey, I've got this version. You want me to try and load it? And you say, yes, please, please. And you cross your fingers and you go, please, 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 please. And you hope it loads with all of the changes. Um, if that's not the case or just something happens, know that this is the file, the project file, okay, that, the main file that we'd be working from. But there's this other file called autosave. And in here are a bunch of versions, okay? So the current one plus all the ones, and it's kind of, they're time and dated backwards. They're in sort of chronological order. These are actually just separate project files. So you can open them up separately and just to see if there's one of them in there that you know has the thing you wanted or at least maybe you were part way through something that you planned to undo, but it crashed. Okay, so have a look through those just in case there are other versions, not just the original PRPOOG. All right, thanks for sticking with this one. It was a long one. Uh, that is file management. And I hope you learned something. Hope it wasn't too boring. Let's get into the next video. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do wanna go further with Premiere Pro, you might wanna join me for my larger courses, okay, called Premiere Pro Essentials and Premiere Pro Advanced. There'll be links for both of those in the description. Hope to see you in the course. Bye.